Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. And last but not least, if you want your corn to high by July, better get the plant, boys. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Corn Warriors. In this episode, we're gonna start out in Sutton, Nebraska with auctioners, and we're gonna take a look at some of the challenges and some of the benefits that they have farming out in the High Plains. I'm gonna give you a hint, it's a little bit windy. Then we're gonna hop over to Oregon, Illinois, to the hammer himself, Dan Lipkis. He's gonna try some different trials in his info and two by two, and also some different population trials and spacing. It's gonna be a great episode, stay tuned. I'm Jenna Oxer and my husband Levi. We're at Double O Farms in South Central Nebraska. This is Crawford. <laughs> Just got back from about a three inch rain and it's like currently 90. It was really still this morning and we had the most beautiful night last night and now yeah. the wind is a It's here to stay, it's here to stay. <laughs> for a few days. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's hammer time no. planting. So yeah. we got about two days of planting left. Looks like probably 20, 25 mile an hour winds next two days. Chance of rain tomorrow night. So for starting so dry, it's, not, it's encouraging to see some chances of rain in the forecast. So. Yeah. But we also want to get the crop in the ground before some of the yeah. rains. Yeah. How long has the planting season went for you guys? Uh, so we started April 19th. Which was later than usual, honestly. Yep, yep, just a lot of cold temperatures and stuff. You know, we've we finished beans before the rain. This is kind of the later end when I plant, but I'm, I'm encouraged to see the warm weather and everything, and the soil temperature is warm, so it'll be nice to kind of get a little bit of on each end of the, of the spectrum, I guess, and we'll see what's best. We twin row plant the soybeans and then single plant the corn, so we did have two planters going, which helped because yeah. we were able to tackle a lot of acres at once with both planters yep, going. Yep, yep, otherwise we'd just be like half done, so yeah. yeah. About two days left and yeah. we'll have it wrapped up for the first time, so yeah. hopefully the last time. There's a lot of things that are not in our control. You gotta stay positive and keep the hammer down, so. Yeah, so, like, so right now we just loaded up a little more starter and some more Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. Yeah, we're using a lot of that this year, really excited about it. I've tested it in the past. I mean, the stalks are bigger, the corn's green. I mean, there's, you can see a, a real difference. And the nitrogen that the microbes produce, it stays in the soil since it's a natural form of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain where other traditional nitrogen that we would apply runs off easily. So this Proven 40 actually puts the 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre in the soil and it stays. So it's and it's totally nice, worth the investment. It's nice to do it now at planting because, you know, you know, it's not like we had it out there a long time ago and, you know, right. we're putting it in the furrow right by the seed. And so then it's working and then the corn can use the nitrogen as it's produced and we'll never yeah. just buy a new product and put it on every acre. We test it and then once it proves itself on our soil and our farming practices, then we'll scale it. And yeah. Pivot Bio passed the test. So far, like. this the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. So. I can nerd out about Pivot Bio pretty hard, so. <laughs> she knows the details, I just. <laughs> I just put it in the ground. It's just cool. It's so yeah, cool. It is neat. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah, I can reach it. Where's Crawford? Who's so big? Who's a big boy? Who's a big boy? Crawford is. <laughs> Crawford is. <laughs> This should be a show called Farming with the Secret Board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crawford, right in there, look in there. Who is that? Who's that baby? Who is that? Huh? Who's that baby? Okay, 
Uh, can you hold him for a second? I got to turn. Offer, no. You're done with the home place? Yeah. Are you having a good day? So yeah. Content. I just want to be done planning. <laughs> I wanted to be getting about this field done by now and I'm not even half. You're going to get it done. God has a plan. <coughs> Whoa! You want to lay down? Mama. Uh, I just don't want this door. I got it. I'll hold the door. I got the door. Oh. Talk about trustful. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. See you over there. So I'm gonna go get <laughs> the boys fed and bathed and ready for that at least. Yeah. I know it. But Yeah, he's tired. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. I'm gonna fold this out. If I can remember how to, I gotta get the, we're gonna try to feed corn through. Okay, I wanna do it right here to make before I load with fertilizer. Okay. So we're planting a farm today. I guess you call it the home farm. Now where I grew up, I don't have any family land, as you might say. Everything I got, I you know, bought or rented. Bought most of it, I guess, over the years. I uh, bought it pretty reasonable quite a long time ago. But the reason I bought it reasonable is like some other farms I have, is because no one else wanted it. It was a livestock farm, it was a dairy farm, but they always had cows on it because the soil type so poor. Uh, but we've really worked on this farm for a long time. Uh, it's cover crop every year. We have seen over that 15 or 20 year period though, we've actually increased our organic matter. Uh, a lot of people say it's very hard to do or you can't do it. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can do it, but it's a low, it's a slow process. Got a lot of manure, a lot of cover crop. Just before this, this is work ground, but uh, what we did, we had a, we left the cover crop standing on it, and we hit it with that high-speed disc, which I think, I don't know if they'll show up, there's some footage of that. And uh, we basically green manured it. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that term, green manure, but um, it's basically putting all that organic matter, or, you know, uh, that growth, back into the soil so i really really like doing that we did a lot of work on this farm when i first got it didn't have a pivot on it. it took me quite a few years before we actually put a pivot on it i don't know at least i don't know five ten years of some crop disasters maybe it wasn't quite that long but it's one of these farms you really need water on but we we could do it it had a there's a creek running through it, so we're pulling water from that creek. Um, had some tree knobs out on some hills, so we had to take those out. They were just farming around them, basically, because it was such crappy sand knobs, they weren't worth farming, but. Uh, then I had a neighbor that dug a pond, and uh, his 
clay per se in between clay and black dirt, mostly clay. He actually hauled hundreds of loads, tandem loads, up on some of these hills. And uh, we put uh, a bunch of dirt on top of the sand hills and spread them out. So this, this farm over the years has had a lot of work, a lot of tender love and care, but I look right out my bedroom window at this field. It'll be some of the best crops that we grow is right here. It's pretty satisfying for me to see that what it was, which was a piece of crap that nobody wanted. And uh, we'll pull 300 bushel corn crop off this. Everything goes halfway decent. Don't count the bad farms out. You know, don't count the cheap farms out if you can, uh, you know, if you have some vision. Like I've always had pretty good vision about what can be done with a farm. I will say it's more work than just a nice, flat, black, well-tiled, good piece of dirt. You gotta, when you're irrigating, it's a lot of work. Can't hold nutrients as well as some of the, you know, it's good ground. Uh, so it has its disadvantages too, but I probably would have never would have had the chance to buy a really good piece of ground. I bought this piece of crap pretty cheap. Was able to pay for it pretty quick as soon as we as soon as we uh, changed it over. That's uh, that's kind of how I have. I don't know if you want to call it success, or, but that's how I've kind of made it in this world, I guess. Taking what other people didn't want or didn't think was any good, and turn it into something. Made a living from it. That's why we farm, you know. We say one is to make 11, the other thing's because we love it. Front door, I watch my cows. Back door, you can uh, look at a nice lush corn crop growing. So those are the kind of things that matter to me, along with, you know, family and friends and, and God. That's my two cents out of, I think that was two and a half cents probably. We've had a horrible time, actually. Yeah, we, uh, I think Dad planted like, he only got like 40 acres done yesterday and he should be doing like 100, 120 easy. Some of that competition stuff just de doesn't want to mix. Or it was more so he kind of accidentally mixed something that he knew he shouldn't have mixed and that, that screwed us up and we were unplugging lines for like two and a half hours after that, blowing them out and that kind of I mean, normally in the spring you get a week and a half to two weeks of nice weather. In the fall you get a week to two weeks of nice weather. We didn't even get that this year. It just went from cold, rainy to hot and humid and I don't know, it's hard. It seems like it's always windy ever more. It just, it seems like every weather event, whether it's rain, wind, heat, cold, it's just extreme. There's no, there's no middle anymore. We've been using BASF, you know, their fungicides. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. So we have a new molecule in it called methantrexluconazole. Instead of saying that, we've changed that name to Revisol. Not only does it move to the tip, but you'll still have longevity and coverage throughout the rest of the leaf. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that you're covered from head to toe. If we don't bring them out here and teach them, you know, they're never going to want to do it. So that's right. You know, we want to. I want to. We, we try to include our kids. You know, obviously, if there's jobs that are safety's first, but. Uh, if yeah, you know you gotta. If you don't raise them with it, you know they. Why would they want to be a part of it? And I'm assuming you were kind of raised the same way. Yeah, it's how I was yeah. raised. Uh, yeah. I, I curiosity, like when did you probably start? Really, you know, I, I was pretty yeah. young. Oh yeah, I will. I started driving. I drove my first tractor by myself at like five. Yeah. yeah. You know, laying out pipes, going real slow. But just. But just you know, and by twelve, you know, I was stock chopping by myself. Absolutely. You know, pretty and swathing and stuff like that. You know. So yeah, it, it doesn't take long and you know, but the thing of it is I wanted to. It's, it, was, it was a want, not a must, you know. 
I wanted no. to be like my dad. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That yeah. He was the one I, since I could, I rode the track. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it's what I wanted to do. So. Yeah, same, same. And I see a lot of that with my kids as oh, well. Yeah, I don't trust me both. That's, that's all you can hope for. That's right, man. Yeah, and well, this, what I see a lot in this day and age is like people want to, I'm too busy and I got to get more done. And, you know, it's like, well, I agree with that to a point, but, you know, you have to, yes. you have to teach this generation and, and give them a chance to learn it. Uh, you know, someday they'll be more help than they are hindrance. Oh, 100%. So some of the challenges we've had this year is, uh, well, we, we started that, it's been the driest planting season I've ever seen, and I know that doesn't say a lot because I'm not super old, but I mean, even my grandpa and dad said, you know, this is never seen go all winter and not get any more. I mean, we had two barely measurable snows, and uh, you know, that was it for moisture. And so when we started, it was so, so dry. And then, so we actually, we ran some pivots on some stuff before we planted some of the early corn. And then we, we really, really lucked out and got about, strung about three inches of rain together in about a five, six day period. And, uh, you know, now we're just getting back in after that. Yes. And then, you know, we did get some, some cold temperatures, a little colder than I would like um, during those rains, but, uh, you know, the corn seems to have, I mean, still kind of came out of it and everything is up of that earlier stuff. But uh, no, the planting conditions right now are probably optimal. Um, good moisture in the ground. Um, we're finally really getting the heat. Put that back in there with you. Is that the good one or the bad one? That's the bad one. No, don't take the bad one. Just take the good one in there. Where's the good one at? Oh, okay. Give me the bad one then. Set it on the pickup so we don't get them confused. Do I need to change any chemicals? What's the deal? Nope, it's all set. Here's what you, I want you to do. Set it down together. Turn your air on, lock your GPS. Go when you cross that driveway. I want you to click the population up. It goes up to like 46 something. Just from the pivot driveway to the end, when you get to the end, turn it back to 35 and just leave it. Just this fast. From the pivot driveway to the end. Hit the up and pull it back to 3.6 mile an hour. It'll work perfect. Do anything going through the drop? No, it'll just float right through. Just slow down. Okay. All right. Got it? Call me if you've got any questions. So we got this field here, we got the ends done, kind of boxed off. I like to get, you know, the whole perimeter done, then we'll just paint it in tonight. My hired guy is taking over for me right now. Um, I gotta run home, get the, you know, the wind's finally going down. I might, I'm gonna probably spray a little bit. For sure, I got water in the tank, so I'm just gonna blow all the lines out, check everything out there, then I'll come back and relieve him and we'll do it all over again tomorrow, so. But uh, as far as that goes, we'll catch you guys on the flip side, so. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test, So I far, like. this the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. We got Mark to come down from Concept Agritech. We like to talk with the growers and get some of that history. That's what gave farmers returns. We got some of Concept Sweet Success. Get that soil biology ramped up. We're getting a little bit of everything. So this is the program we'll be running. That's all that's in there. ever 
plant deeper than two to get moisture. Yeah, by last year. Yep. Wasn't that long ago, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Can't find any of these. I ain't finding nothing either. So that's one, two, three, four, five. It's the sixth row. The seed depth's a little inconsistent, but it's overall probably a little on the sh uh, shallow side. We need to move our depth down and possibly, I don't know what he's got for the down pressure. They had it all the way up because we were trying to break the crust with it. Oh, that is. Woo. Did you see that smile? Say hi, Amber. Say hello. Say hello. Yeah, we might be might be planting some sweet corn if we can get my dad rolling. <laughs> this will be her first time planting sweet corn. Amber is a little over 10 months old, so she'll be 11 months on the 25th of May. Yeah, and we're real excited about it, huh? So yeah, it's been a good year so far. I think planting's been slow, but we're finally getting going on things. Yeah. I, uh, I need to go talk to the boys up there. Sorry. Well, planter number two for the day. Uh, we bought a twin row Great Plains planter for beans, and we were gonna try a little bit of corn. Well, today's the day. Overall, I guess I'm getting along all right. I got a lot to learn on this thing on corn yet. I'm taking a crash course here. So I was thinking about something when the, the corn water screws out here. I think I am the only surviving corn warrior from the very beginning. Uh, this will be the, I don't know, is it the sixth season? but I believe I am the oldest. Oldest surviving, I've been around the most seasons, and I'm the oldest. Yeah, that's great, huh? Yeah. But I challenge any of those guys to uh, keep up with me all day. I still, I still can do pretty good. We'll see how long I last, I guess. That's the end of the day. Well, it isn't going to be the end of our day, but the end of the day, the corn warriors crew. As you can see, we're doing the important planting. Right now, David's out here with a sweet corn planter. Um, these boys will appreciate that when they come back in, uh, in July and we got sweet corn ready for them. So we got a little rough start to planting. Looks like we're going pretty good now. Yesterday and the day before was pretty tough, but we've had 90 degree days. It's humid. I've never seen it in Northern Illinois uh this humid in may i'm actually having a little trouble with seed delivery just because it's so humid i think so anyway i'm going back to work you guys can head on down the road i think you're going to see corey hi right, corey we'll see you later next week on corn warriors so this is the last day of planting corn unless something tragic happens between now and four o'clock I really wish that they'd take population out of the book. Oh my goodness. There he said it. <laughs>